Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap and show. Uh, happy Tuesday, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. Wherever you are in the world, thank you very much for joining us. If you are brand new, uh, kindly like, share, subscribe, right? Come aboard, uh, come aboard the nightly uh, updates. We give you a, a pretty unbiased take of what the market is doing on a day-by-day, night-to-night uh, kind of basis. So we talked about it on the video uh, over the weekend. Usually, like I said on, on the weekend video, usually... When we see you know, a big distribution followed by a reclaiming of the five-day moving average, you know, automatically be bullish. But the ping pong match continues. It's 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 really amazing how long we've been going. It's probably about three weeks going on uh, a full month now that we just can't follow through in that direction. We lose the 50-day moving average. We go down a couple of days, which is fine. And the price actual correlates. Uh, the research, that's cool. The market reclaims the 50-day. We go up a couple of days, and the market comes back in. And that's exactly what's exactly what's been going on here. Uh, and it's kind of getting a little bit old here. That's why I said uh, going into today's session, you know, I'm, I don't have any um, I don't have any strong feelings one way or another because we've been seeing this ping-pong match uh, happening now for almost a month. And that's exactly what happened again today. Today's catalyst uh, was Oracle. You know, Oracle had a really uh, great run, had a great, great, uh, you know, big move in 2023, like a lot of uh, technology names. They came out earnings, their guidance wasn't great. And guess what happens to any stock that is uh, moving higher and then uh, earnings fupa happens, right? It takes a dump on itself. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, Oracle got hit pretty aggressively. And in the meantime, that all these software stocks, well, they got taken down with it. I mean, look what happened. You know, look at Microsoft. Microsoft had a fantastic two-day run, and it basically gave that back up in one session. So the market, again, is just is just one of those situations that the interval uh, will eventually play itself out. Um, but that's why we always talk about, and this is what I always harp upon, play the next day, right? Don't play what do you think is going to happen three weeks from now or three years from now. Play the next day. And as traders, the funny thing is, I, I tweeted this out um, a little while ago. Uh, I, I would say, and this is, you know, I would say this is pretty accurate. Uh, this is kind of what I tweeted out. 90% of all my trades are based on the previous night's research. For example, if I'm looking at Tesla, like we talked about yesterday, uh, like we talked about yesterday on the video to potentially uh, confirm today's channel, which it did, it went up about three and a half points, and then obviously everything reversed. But, you know, 90% of all my trades are based on the previous night's research. The other 5%, another 5% is stocks that were on my research but did not confirm the next night or the next day, excuse me. And the last 5% are stocks that are uh, coming out with very, very aggressive short-term expiration option flow out of the money. Uh, and, you know, I'll trade them, you know, I'll trade them as well. And the moral of that story is I, I don't prostitute my money. I'm not looking actively for trades. The trades that uh, we're doing and, and, and occupying our attention span are trades that we're basically looking for from the previous night's research. And if they do confirm, that's great. Because you, the, the worst thing you can do is just start trading random stocks because you think you know where the stock is going to go. It's a very, very, uh, very, um, uh, it's a very, big area of concern for developing new traders because when they don't see something that is developing in front of their eyes or they're you know they're they're ready for they start reaching right they start reaching for trades that are not there and instead of waiting for your a a plus uh even a minus setups your your grassroom for f letter setups you know g letter setups you know guys the market will always be there okay always remember you know you're, you're always playing research you're always playing premium or you're not playing at all. The last thing you want to do is set yourself in a situation and, and, and put your career into motion that you're trading because the market's open. Okay, today was some really good value, right? We had we caught Tesla, a lot of us came in low overnight, but we caught Tesla, especially off the previous day's range, this IO, IONQ, 
uh, that we talked about. Remember we talked about this last yesterday in the video, right? Above the brief, it finally broke out. It was up about a buck and change at one point. Uh, you had Nav NVIDIA shaking off a, a, a very small area there. Um, so we, we were definitely ready for the day. And the coolest part about today's session was we were pretty much done uh, in the first you know 40 minutes of the day just because everything else was just kind of just bouncing all over the place. Go green, go rain, go green. And that's a product of a market that just can't find its footing. The good news is we continue, at least for now, uh, continue to close above the 50-day moving average. Again, guys, this 372 area is, you know, your line of the sand, right? As long as the bulls continue to close above 372, we're okay. Uh, that area we talked about last night on the video, 377.63, as you can see, never got there. So here's our channels going into uh, the rest of the week. You got 377.63 to the upside of the queues and 372 to the downside of the queues. So, I mean, that's your channels. And if you are sitting there and there's nothing else going on in between, it's just one big, you know, one big pillow fight, just leave it alone. Leave it alone until your research gets confirmed. Leave it alone until one of your alerts get confirmed. So what I do every single night, what I do is I set alerts, right? I set alerts to remind myself and, you know, if the stock doesn't confirm today, maybe it'll confirm tomorrow. Maybe it'll confirm, you know, maybe it'll confirm three weeks from now. But the point is always be ready. And then you're not reaching. You don't find yourself reaching. You're finding yourself based on your previous weeks or previous night's research that falls into your lap when you're least expecting. And you know technically, right? You know technically uh, the stock is ready to go. Another big issue today was uh, Apple, alongside with Oracle, who guided lower, took down the software and the rest of the tech space. Well, you had Apple, right? They were coming in for, uh, they were coming in for, and people were ready for the uh, iPhone event. Okay, another iPhone, right? Another iPhone, fantastic. You, you could spend another eight million dollars on another iPhone that nobody could afford, that the you know, majority of people can't afford, and inflation is going up. But they need to have their fifteen hundred dollar iPhone. Uh, which is exactly the same phone as it was the last eight times, right? I have the iPhone 12. The only reason uh, I even upgraded from the iPhone 12, I had an iPhone 7, right? I'm not a big technology guy, but I had the iPhone 7. And the only reason I upgraded to the to the recent, well, not the recent version, but the iPhone 12 a couple of years ago, because my phone dropped, the microprocessor cracked, and my half my screen was, was dark. So I had to do it. But other than that, there's no difference between the phone that I have, or my my I, you know, my daughter's iPhone uh, 14 that she's got for her birthday. So the moral of the story is the market didn't like the event, and they sold it right off. Right? They sold it right off. Uh, it was a pretty aggressive sell-off. Sell the news. I don't think anybody bought into that news, considering how the market was reacting down one percent on the day. Uh, but again, it really is showing you that there are still a buyer strikes on a lot of names that are just not performing or lost their supply zones or demand zones uh, and they just can't recover and they're just punishing stocks that just can't reclaim the previous days of the previous week's channels and that's exactly what we've been doing now for the you know for the majority of the last three and a half four weeks is there a good opportunity every single day yeah for the most part this is a really good opportunity right so again for this week uh, I'm still watching Nvidia, right? I'm still watching the video. I think it's buying time here. Guys, continue to watch this channel. Like I said in, in, in the weekend video, you know, continue to watch this channel. If they start losing the bottom, you know, the bottom range here, man. This thing is gonna get hit. You know, this thing looks really good. Look at a name like Nike. Nike, we discussed. I actually uh I actually started a position uh this morning on Nike. It I wouldn't say squeeze me back. It was a starter position, lost about 40 something cents into this thing, got back into this thing. Uh, you know, closer to the close. This is the lowest close in this whole formation. Keep an eye on this Nike, guys. If this thing starts building back, uh, this thing starts confirming today's channel, starts losing 96, uh, this thing can get hit. Look at a name like HLIT, another name we talked about over the weekend. Update, this is the lowest close now in this whole formation. Uh, looks good, right? It looks good. If this thing starts confirming, gets below this Bollinger Band, again, is it going to be like a Tesla move? Of course not. But the point is, it'll start trickling down and have a multi- uh, multi-day, uh, maybe even multi-week move down. Look at a name like Ambarella, right? I love these. I continue to love these earnings low plays. You know, maybe it doesn't confirm tomorrow, but that's the point. You know, go, you know, go on your alerts, whatever how you set your alerts, right? Here's my Ambarella alert, right? Let's put an alert. Maybe it confirms tomorrow. Maybe it confirms next week. Maybe it doesn't confirm. But again, be ready on your research and not some random thing, uh, not some random thing that you're 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 trying to pop up 
uh, off of a filter that has no edge. But keep an eye on Amberell. It's another name uh, that looks uh, pretty good. Again, the question is, does it confirm tomorrow? Does it confirm this week? We don't know. But that looks uh, really good as well. Uh, AMD, just like uh, NVIDIA, right? AMD, just like NVIDIA, you know, we talked about this bottom channel a couple of days ago, like lower. It held the bottom here today in the last two days, exactly the same area. If there's more weakness tomorrow in technology, keep an eye on this thing for a potential move lower. Look at Hertz, right? Look at Alerts, look at alert, Alerts, Hertz, right? You have a multi-month channel developing to the downside potential. Keep an eye on this thing. And, and I know it sounds like I'm bearish going into tomorrow. It's not that I'm bearish. But again, when you have a 1% move to the downside, every stock that you're watching that has a strong chart, obviously it's not anywhere near the upper channel. So Amazon, right? I still love the chart on Amazon. But is Amazon ready for tomorrow? Maybe, right? We got the CPI coming out tomorrow. Maybe uh, you know, maybe the inflation data will get Amazon uh, going where it has to go. But it didn't confirm yet. So I think the market's action tomorrow is definitely going to be heavily uh, predicated on the CPI. Can the bulls start, you know, reclaiming back um, yesterday's levels? We'll see, right? It's, we'll see. Are, are these stocks that, that we talked about, you know, poised to go lower on, on, on a crappy reading by the CPI? Again, we shall see, said the blind man. We don't know. We can't guess, right? The only thing we could do uh, is be prepared. Tesla, for example, right? Had, you know, a pretty good move today, washed out today, uh, trapped shorts on the bottom range, ripped it back up, took out Friday's, uh, took out yesterday's channel, went up another three and a half dollars. Beautiful move today. Congratulations for all you guys who had it overnight or even took it today on the dip or took it today on, on, on yesterday's channel. But even Tesla, right? Tesla probably does need one or two days now to kind of go sideways. It's not imminent now to take out the bot, you know, the top of this channel here in, in uh, July high. So the point is, it's not that I'm bearish, right? I'm not bearish whatsoever going into tomorrow, I am just prepared to the downside just in case, right? Just in case the market uh, doesn't like the inflationary, dairy, uh, da uh, inflationary uh, data. But again, to the upside, I'm still watching Amazon. I'm still watching Tesla. I'm still watching everything uh, that we've been talking about that hasn't confirmed yet. But the most important part is, da -da -da -da, drum roll, please. Stay prepared, be prepared, and stay safe. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night, folks, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.